Hello. Hello again. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome to another episode of David Rides a Trike. I'm David, I'm riding a trike. If you see any large purple markings on me, it's because I just finished eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I know at least one glop of the grape jelly flew out. I think I got it all, but I'm not sure. Anyhow, if you've seen my videos before and you know the introduction there will be a link down below in the description so you can skip the introduction last week i think i forgot to put that in this week i promise i'll do it i try to provide motivation for people with chronic illnesses and disabilities to get out and find some fun form of exercise because doing so can be therapeutic and doing so is a lot of fun Personally, I fall into both the chronically ill and disabled categories. I was diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic when I was a year and a half old, although I had a pancreas transplant when I was 41, which technically cured me of the diabetes. I've had three organ transplants total. I've had stage 3 cancer with chemo. I've had tons of skin cancer, radiation treatment. I am legally blind. I've had a million surgeries, procedures, and maladies. So today I'm riding through a forest preserve and I'll be going pretty slow because it can be pretty crowded on uh, weekends, which is what this is. It's a Sunday afternoon, beautiful mid-September Sunday afternoon and I've been riding my new Ice Sprint X Tour for about six or seven weeks now and I thought I'd give you my initial thoughts about the roll-off speed hub, the internal gearing system. I will do it my usual pros versus cons style. First, I'll give you five pros, followed by five cons. And I've got to tell you, it took a lot of work to find five cons because I really do love this thing and there's not a lot bad to be said about it. Keep in mind, I am not an expert by any means. Like many of you, I'm just an avid trike rider and my review is really just covering the things that to me either enhance or degrade my riding experience. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first pro, which isn't necessarily to me at least the uh, main pro, although it is an important one, is the almost maintenance-free aspect of it. Unlike a derailleur where you have all the cogs on the cassette on the back and the derailleur mechanism back there in the cage have to be pretty finely tuned in order to work properly. The roll-off hub requires no maintenance. There's no kind of somewhat constant adjusting and the only real maintenance that has to be done is, I believe it's every 3,000 miles or once a year, you have to drain the oil out of the roll-off and put new oil in. From everything I've read, heard, and seen, this is a very easy process. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes total, including draining the old oil out. That said, given my limited vision, 
I will probably leave that up to my local bike shop, Amling Cycle, to do for me when the time comes. Number two is the very wide gear range. The roll-off has 14 speeds, which to a lot of people might not sound like a lot. But between the first and the 14th gear, there's a 526% difference. That's huge. And riding around the Chicago area, like I do, which is really flat, I have no problem finding a comfortable gear. But again, from what I've been told, from what I hear from other people, even living in a very hilly or mountainous area, the roll-off goes low enough that you have no problem going up hills or even mountains for that matter. Kind of related to the wide gear range, number three is the equal uh, spacing or the equal change in gear inches between each of the 14 gears. Unlike a derailleur where you may change the rear cog and sometimes it can make a tiny difference, sometimes it can make a huge difference, and then you have to adjust the front chain ring to find just where you want to be. The speed hub, you know where you are all the time. And because the spacing is equal, you just go from one to another and you know what to expect when you do. It's a really nice feature. My fourth pro is being able to switch multiple gears at once. You can go from gear six to eight or nine to 12, one to 14 if you want, with one twist of the grip shift. It has no problem doing that. It's not recommended that you don't do it. Switching multiple gears, especially with e-assist, is a really, really nice benefit. And the fifth pro is, and I forgot to mention, if you stick around near the end, I'll give you a not too often thought of, I don't think, bonus sixth pro. But my fifth pro is the ability to shift when you're stopped. I knew about this when I was considering buying the new trike with the roll off but i you know it, it's like okay you know i guess that's all right didn't really think it would have a big impact turns out i really love this feature i stop a lot when i'm riding i stop to take pictures i stop to look at things i stop to answer the phone i stop to get video equipment ready to record and when I was riding with a derailleur system I'd remember to drop down into a low gear so it was easy to get started again maybe half the time with the roll off doesn't matter I could stop when I'm ready to go again I just twist the grip shift and start going. It's really a nice feature and uh, while it seems like something that doesn't make that big a difference, turns out for me it really is. Okay, now for the cons. The first con is the obvious, the cost. Everything with trikes is expensive as most of you probably know any accessory, whatever it is. And this is no exception. I don't want to get into uh, discussing exact costs, but let's say 
ordering this with the roll off rather than the standard derailleur system tax a serious chunk of change, well over a thousand dollars onto the cost of the trike. So there's that. The second con is the noise. Gears one through seven can be a little on the noisy side. Seven actually, for some reason, being the worst. For me, that's really not much of an issue. I hear it, but it doesn't sound like anything bad. And I know it's normal, so it doesn't bother me. 8 through 14 are dead silent. Um, you know, and the noise is kind of a cross between, I don't know, buzzing bees and, uh, and, and gears meshing. <laughs> um, I don't think it's that bad. A lot of people do. I guess it's a personal thing. Downside number three repairs. And this could be a significant downside. The roll-off is extremely well designed and well built. It should last for a long time without any problems. But like anything else, you can develop a problem. And if it breaks or needs to be worked on, your bike shop can't do it for you. It has to be sent to a roll-off repair center, and that means you'll be without your trike, or I suppose your bike, for a little while while it's getting repaired. My fourth con is no shifting while under a heavy load, that is, while putting a lot of pressure on the pedals. Now, the same is true for a derailleur system. However, with a derailleur system, you could sometimes get away with it. Sometimes it could really mess up your derailleur too. With the roll off, you just can't do it. It will kind of make a clunk noise and it'll feel like the grip shift is stuck in that position. So to shift, you have to just back off on the pressure a little bit on the pedals do your shift and resume pedaling. It's a really easy technique and you'll learn it and have it mastered literally in no time. If I can do it quickly, you'll do it quickly. The fifth con, and I really was searching for cons at this point, is something that for a while now has kind of divided cyclists into two camps and that is the grip shifts or the twist shifts. This is something that people seem to either really like or hate. Personally, when they first came out, I think in the early 90s, I assumed I would hate it. Um, I made sure that all my bikes and even my first trike had bar end shifters. But with the roll off, you don't get a choice. It's uh, the twist shifts or nothing. And as it turns out, I like it just fine. <laughs> I have no problem with it. It's very easy to do. And as long as you don't have any uh, problems with your wrists as far as mobility or anything like that, it's very easy to shift. And there's really no risk of shifting accidentally when you don't want to. So that's it, five pros, five cons. Overall, for me, the pros heavily, heavily outweigh the cons um you know this is another one of the things like the e-assist once you go that way you can't go back it's just such a pleasure just riding and easily shifting 
knowing what gear you're in. Actually, I think the, I think they're numbered. I can't see them, but I have no trouble determining what gear I'm in. Um, and I promised you a sixth bonus pro that I said most people probably hadn't thought of. And that is your chain will never fall off with the roll off speed hub. Your, the chain is over the rear cog. There's just one of them. It doesn't move. It doesn't try to go up one higher or lower. And if you have one of those screws misadjusted, risk falling off. And because there's only one chain ring on the front, it can't fall off there. Now, some people do have a multiple chain ring up front, so I guess it could fall off there. But the standard 14 speed roll off with just one chain ring up front, it's uh, chain fall off proof. And that's really nice. It's not a big deal to replace or to uh, put the chain back on, but it could be a pain in the neck and kind of ruin the flow of your ride. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share. That will help my channel grow and hopefully uh, reach more people who will be motivated to get outside and find some form of exercise. Leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you. I will get back to you. That's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.